So last time I left you, I showed you a little bit about how Lua works. There's one last thing I have to teach you, and then we have to start looking at the train system that we have here. And the last thing we have to think about is functions. Um, I would, would skip them otherwise, but they're very important, so we, we sort of have to have them. So go to your computer here, and then just go into your disk sol n folder and then just look up for the function and just edit function there it is cool all right now you probably would have seen if you've looked at any little code you would have seen these all over the place where we've got like a line here with some brackets maybe some things inside the brackets here and this is what's called a function so we know that our code operates in a linear structure so if i go like x equal to five x is equal to one y is equal to three it's going to do them step by step by step but if you think about it in a really long program that could lead to a lot of long long code and what if you want to stop and do different things along the way what if your conditionals your decisions have lots of complicated procedures. You don't want to have them all cramped together because it takes forever. So instead, we have what we call functions. And a function is a whole block of code that you can just call whenever you want to. We call calling a function, um, passing it some input. It might return some output or not, but it'll have an effect on the application that means you don't have to worry about typing it over and over again. So how a function looks like is... A function looks like this. We have the function keyword, then the name of the function. We're going to use that one that I've got there, print value there and then we have an opening bracket something you have it like that and then any parameters so in this case we've got two this is just the way I've written here so we have name here then a comma make sure that's separated by a comma and then value is our second one then just end that with a bracket and make sure we have end so to say that all this exists within the function indent there to make sure that you know that it's inside the function so um, let's just exp I'll just demonstrate how this this what this method is going to do I think I'm going to make this print out a certain string a certain number of times. So it's going to print out the name string a certain number of times, in this case five times. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to go i is equal to zero while i is less than value. So we're going to use that iterative for loop I mentioned beforehand. Do remember the end there. Now in this always make sure that the last thing you have there is i is equal to i plus one so you don't have an infinite loop happening. You want to avoid that of course. And then just type in print name like that. There we go. And that's going to call it. So the first time that's called, you can see it's going to print hello five times. Now let's try print value. Now let's print out nitro two times. Yes, I can be vain. Okay, that will do for the second. Now let's just use function. And there we go. And you can see that how we can call those functions to do different things for us. And that's how they work. It's, they're very, very simple and they're, they're quite useful, so do be sort of aware of those. You can also return things with function functions as well. Um, I won't do an act demonstration that, you can practice that for yourself, but essentially you can do that by saying, for example, return, and that can be anything like true or zero or hello or whatever you like there. That can be done as a return type. And then that will work just like an assignment for another variable. So remember when I was saying like x equal to three or x equal to true, it could actually just be x equal to print value and that will get a return type. Of course, if it doesn't return anything, then it will just be nil. So just be aware of that. Okay, that'll do. The reason I'm talking about functions is because we're going to be using them to access the Redstone um, APIs we've got here as well. And API stands for Application Programming Interface. There are lots of them that are available. You can list them just by typing in APIs, and there they all are. So you can see we've got things like coroutine, colors, peripherals. But the one we want is Redstone. So let's just help Redstone. And you can see we've got get input and get output. So these are gonna the get methods are gonna return a boolean, true or false. And you can see we have parameters. The side parameter we've got at the top there, that was the one is actually indicating like a side of the computer. So for example, like the left computer, the right, top, the back. So you see we've got left, right, and back are the three ones that we're using. And you can also set the output and the input as well. So that can all be done nice and easily. Alright, so let's look at how the system is going to work and what it does. I'll um, fire up the other version. This is very easily done. Just go over to your other computer here. This has got it all ready to go. So just go into Sol N and then just, it's called Shooter. I really couldn't think of a good name. I'm terrible with names. I do apologize, but this is sort of how it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a minecart over here and I'll see what happens. So when I hit this button, it'll just fire a minecart across to the other side. Now just wait for five seconds. Three, four, five, and off it goes again. Look at that, it's getting stuck. This is not well designed for one minecart, it might be a little bit tricky. We can press that button again, and see it in action again. Off you go. One, two, three, four, so, okay, there we go. so what this actually is, if you can't tell, is actually a self sort of 
backwards and forwards sending train system, like a little bit like a subway. So the idea is that if we have these both on back and forth, the train will keep on coming back and forth from one station to the next, and it has about five seconds for people to mount or dismount from the train station um, before the train then runs off again. Now these little levers here are very important because we can actually use these to delay the stopping if we want to. So let's just hit this thing here again. Train a bit of a push because he really is taking forever. And let's just hit that lever. So now, this actually isn't going to go after five seconds. It'll stay indefinitely until I turn that lever back off again. And there we go. It's off, fired off again. Just like that. That'll keep going. And there we go. And that's sort of the system we're going to design. So let's think about how it's going to work. First off, there are three different things that are Redstone enabled here. I'm going to talk you through the development process so you can solve these sorts of problems. Because remember, programming is part, you know, it's, it's sort of. It's, it's partly um, just, you know, writing code, but there's also a lot of thinking and planning that has to go into it as well. So. so there are three parts. First off, we have to have this thing here. This obviously is an output sector. We're going to output to this to turn it on or off. We're getting input from here to indicate that a train has passed over the over the track and is ready to, to begin this, this loading and unloading process. And we're getting input from here as well. So that correlates to, if we take a look carefully from our little minecart thing, I've got glass here so you can see it very easily. This clearly here is input. So this is, our, this is where we're going to be setting our output on the right side, and we get input from the left when a train has arrived, and from the back when a train needs to be stalled indefinitely. So just go dot dot here, and just edit the shooter code. And this has all been prepared and ready to go as we start with. So we've already got a while true loop here, say I want this to begin forever, and we've got down here a function sleep. And what sleep does, it's a function that's already automatically in loop, and it just means wait for however many seconds we put in here. So this will wait for one second. And this just means our, our loop won't, won't cancel indefinitely. So, Now, this conditional here, this if true then, is going to be when a train arrives. This obviously isn't going to be good enough. What we actually want to do is we actually want to check the input to see if there's a train that's arrived from this thing here. So what we're going to do is we're going to, if, I'm going to shorten that to 0 0.1, just because I see that might foresee that causing problems. So if, I'm not going to go train, we're going to go if redstone dot get input. So remember we got this before from the, the API, and just look it up, help redstone if you're stuck. Now the parameters are the side, which is a string, in this case it's going to be the left side. If getting the input is equal to true, then a train has arrived on the station. Now you don't actually need the equal equals true, because this will return true or false by default. So if if they've got an input from the left side, then it will return true, otherwise it will return false. So there we are. Um, so that's going to go through. When that's the case, then we can execute the following code. So what do we want to do? Think about it. First off, we know that we need to give passengers enough time to debark from the station. So let's give them a couple of seconds. We may want to change that time later, so a clever thing to do is set it as a variable. So we'll have a variable up here which we'll call delay time, we'll call it. And let's set that to, let's start with five seconds. We can change that a little bit later on. So now, first thing we should do is we should wait that five seconds to let people get off the train. So sleep, delay time. So that'll sleep for 5 seconds, or for 10 seconds, or for however much we want the delay time to be. Once that's done, let's just make this very simple. It's always good to start with the smallest problem first. Once that's done, let's fire off some output to send off the train on its way. Now remember, after you've turned off the input, you have to let the train get off this track and then turn it back off again, otherwise it'll be left on. So make sure that we're doing that. The way we're going to do that is we're going to go redstone.setOutput on the right side to true. Then I'm going to sleep for let's say 1.5 seconds will be enough and then redstone dot set output on the right side to false. There we are using the, those booleans again. That'll turn off the network and actually give us enough time for the train to run. So let's see if that's working well for us. So we can just exit out of here and just run shooter. Now that's up and running. Let's just fire that away. Now, this is going to be a little bit sticky for the first second, but that's alright. We'll just let it go here first. This one should be up and running. I'll just check to make sure that's the case. Um, um, we should be okay. And off it goes. Now it's going to run past here. Yes, I, I would recommend being a bit clever the way that you turn your train track than I have here. Two, three, four, and there it goes. Beautiful. So look at that. So it's actually firing automatically. And it's stuck. That's okay. Doesn't matter. All right, we'll kill our application. We can come back and look at it later. Great. Cool. Okay. So far, looking pretty good. Um, now, this isn't quite enough because we actually want to do this check here for the input from here, right? We want to actually stop the program from letting the train go until that is equal to false. Think about it. If this is equal to t true when we're ready to send the train, we should wait until it's equal to false again. That is, we know the train's ready to go. So how will we do that? Let's do another while loop, an infinite while loop. So what we're going to do is we're going to go 
while redstone dot get input from the back. As long as we that is true, that is to say, as long as we're receiving input from the back, as long as that switch is down and we're ready to keep waiting, do and let's just sleep for 0.1 seconds and then end like that. So what's this going to do? This is going to give us a couple of seconds to actually run this. So it might be a good idea to have some coin here. Waits until the lever has been set to false. Look at that. Not too bad at all. All right, I think it's ready to go. So let's see if that's going to be enough. We'll run our shooter again. Let's see what happens. So we'll send it this way first. There it is. Now that may have been moving too fast over the pressure plate. Just be warned, those pressure plates, they're a little bit fiddly at times. So this is working. Let's just make sure it's working on its own first. Always test it component by component. And that one's working correctly. So we'll just push that over there. Let that take us five seconds. But now let's pull down this lever to say, I want to stop here. And let's see what happens. Wait for it. Here we are. Now remember, it should take about five seconds for it to go. So if it goes on its own, then we know it's broken. But it hasn't. What happens if we flip the lever? Pretty dead on perfect, actually. That's about what we're after. It's about what we're after indeed. And there you go. That's a subway system. That's working quite nicely. No real difficulties with the way things are going. Like I say, I would be a bit more careful with the way this is done. It's tricky because if the train moves too fast, then when you ride it, you might miss the pressure place, but if it moves too slowly, then when it, there's nothing in it, then it doesn't run. It's a, a delicate balance. I haven't quite got it right here, but that's okay. You can sort of get the idea. And there you go. That's it. That's pretty much all there is to it. Um, really hope that someone found this useful. Again, like I say, I'm, what I'm trying to get across here is that this is like a very mundane program. This is the simplest of the simple as far as things that you can produce in Lua. It's a very, very powerful language and you can do so many more amazing things in Minecraft. If you're interested and you like this, check out some of the Turtle API and some of the RedNet API. Think about doing some network applications or some, some you know, some robot-based applications because there's so much more that can be done with this. This is just the, the, the smallest point and it's a very um, simple entry point to begin with. If you've gotten through this tutorial without any troubles, Bravo, well done, because this is introductory computer science stuff, this is actually not easy at all, it's actually quite challenging, so if you found this, found this not too bad, or you managed to get through it and you understood everything, congratulations. Go out, do some more, have some fun with it. It's a great, great thing to do, it's a lot of fun, you actually might find this is a real passion, so really hope that you found this useful. Best of luck with all your programming stuff, and um, yeah, see how it goes.